The first topic for our module is um, this question, why does modality matter? But you'll notice that the why is in parentheses because we're being a little tricky here and asking first, does modality matter? And then why does it matter? And again, to a certain degree, this is a trick question because of course the formats that we teach in um, impact the way that we teach and impact the way that our students learn. There are so many, there are so many words that we use to define these formats and modalities, so many different definitions. And one of the things we wanna do is really pin this down um, to understand these definitions. And there are some good reasons for that. Um, before I go on, I just wanna point out on this slide that there's a question mark and a link. Um, if you're watching this and you wanna click on that link, it'll take you to one of the questions in um, this week in, in the formats and, and modalities module, if you feel like answering it, but you can also explore those just on um, the module website. So we wanna pin down these definitions and there really are some good reasons for this. The first of which is that it helps our students. Um, you know, there's more and more evidence that our students are uh, wanting to take online courses, but they need to understand what these formats mean. And I know from my own experience working with students that um, when I'm advising them say for the next semester and we're looking at formats in our own um, courses here at PSU, sometimes they're not sure what we mean by hybrid or online asynchronous or synchronous. Um, so coming to some common understanding of this helps us make sure that our students are on the same page. And as I just mentioned, um, there really is increasing evidence, particularly because of what we've gone through for the last three years, that student, students are more and more interested or maybe intrigued um, by the idea of completely online or mostly online courses. This is a graph from a recent um, research project out of Educause uh, polling or surveying students about technology and in particular about their interests and preferences for different course modalities. But another good reason why it's important work for us to try and pin these definitions down is it helps us prepare to teach. Um, once we understand um, more fully what the format is that we're using, we can prepare to, um, to use it the way that it, it's designed to be used. Um, so spending some time um, understanding our format allows us to take this to the next level, which we'll be getting into a little bit in the second topic um, of this module. Kind of an elephant in the room in all of this is the role of technology, um, because so many of our formats are actually defined by the technologies that they either use or don't use. Um, and the reality is that those technologies are not neutral. Um, they are designed to uh, provide us with certain affordances and they, ultimately reshape the way in which we communicate with each other, um, sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. So we do have to be critical um, adopters of this technology, critical researchers of this technology and users of this technology, um, both for our students and for ourselves. And then there's this question of what are we actually missing with our term? Um, this article by Leo um, Haveman really gets at this, um, the idea of what blended learning is. So even before we found ourselves in the middle of the pandemic, when maybe at some of our schools, and I know here at PSU online wasn't a terribly common format, more and more of us in our traditional face-to-face -face classrooms were teaching online. We were having our students engage with materials online, having them um, publish their work online. Our students themselves are learning online all the time, sometimes in ways that we've supported and, and fostered and structured for them, sometimes in ways that they have um, figured out for themselves. Sometimes those aren't ways that we necessarily think are, are helping them very much. But acknowledging that's, that's true is really important for us um, as we grapple with what it means to both teach and learn through um, you know, technology and network mediated spaces. In the end, I think for this topic, what I really um, came to is this idea of holding some tensions um, in front of us, not because we can resolve them, because I don't think they are fully resolvable, but understanding what those tensions are help us to understand what questions we need to be asking. The first one here is that, yes, it's important to pin down these definitions. It's important so that we can be on the same page as each other. It's important so we can prepare. But at the same time, we all want to be able to teach in ways that are flexible and responsive to our students, to our contexts. 
we want to be able to um, be confident that when unexpected circumstances emerge, we'll be able to um, adapt to those in ways that will help our students and will not overwhelm us. So that's one tension that I think we need to really um, sit with and, and try and work within. The other one is um, this one, which is that, yes, there are fundamental differences um, between and among these formats, but, and also, <laughs> Um, there are ways in which they overlap and are more alike than we might might acknowledge. So I encourage us all to really spend some time thinking about these tensions. There are others that may emerge as we talk over the next two weeks. Um, spend some time thinking about them, spend some time um, understanding them, and ultimately um, asking us ourselves questions that will help us um, move forward. Thank you.